Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Going Places with Abu Maika. If this is your first time watching my videos, welcome to my channel where I talk about all things Canadian from an immigrant's perspective. Now, this video is about the two most financially responsible things you can do in Canada. Okay, is it building good credit? Is it having health insurance? Is it saving for your kids' college education? Is it having an emergency fund? What is it? Okay, you want to find out more about that, do stay tuned. Okay, welcome back guys so a little bit of about background to this video i have done a couple of videos on finance i'm doing a finance series being financially responsible in canada i'm a life licensed professional like i mentioned in my last video uh licensed by the fsrao and the aic okay now what does that mean i'll talk about that as we go in the video but this video guys is about the two most financially responsible things to do in canada whether you've lived in Canada all your life or you're a new immigrant in Canada, you need to have these things in place, guys. And I'm going to be talking about them. So first thing, credit score. Now, is credit score the most important thing? Not necessarily. No, because you can live without credit. OK, if you're always paying for stuff in cash, no one cares what your credit score is. OK, you want to buy a car for 20 grand, go to the dealership, pay cash. No one cares what your credit score is. You want to buy the latest iPhone is 2000 bucks. Pay for it with a debit card cash no one cares what your credit score is but you want to buy something and pay for it over a period of time buy something and pay for it later you do need good credit okay and what that means for a lot of people is want to get a mortgage want to pay for it over 20 years 25 years 30 years whatever and for that you need a good credit score that's primarily the reason why a lot of new immigrants get credit cards okay and because they want to build a good credit score, good credit score to get a mortgage but yeah, I mean, some people plan to buy or build houses back in their home countries and you know, they don't want to build anything in Canada. Fine, no problem. So those are so having good credit is exactly something you can avoid, right? Because you can live without credit. Now, saving for kids, college education. I've got two boys. I've got two sons. One is uh, aged uh, five years. The other one is aged six months. If I ask the five-year-old, do you want to go to college? When you grow up, he'll say yes. He doesn't even know what college is. If I ask the six month old, you just look at me and start laughing. Okay? So I don't know, guys, if those kids are going to go to college or not. The beauty with Canada is that you can pursue a lot of career opportunities without college education, such as what I do right now. Okay? I'm life licensed. It cost me 850 bucks plus tax to do what I do, to get the license to do what I'm doing right now. So you don't need a college education for this. Okay? If my son decides to do what I do, he won't need to go to college to do this. So I don't know. But as a responsible parent, I want to plan to at least cash flow my kids' college education if they decide to do that. Right. But again, kids may not go to college. So it's not absolutely essential and necessary to do that. OK. Health insurance. Yeah. Well. I haven't had to see a doctor guy since I came to Canada. Um, I've only used my Alberta health thing once or twice when I just went to see a doctor, but oh, I just did. Uh, so, yeah, some people can. Life, guys, comes with some inherent risks, but for the most part, we've got some things under control. But two things that are certain, guys, you're not going to work forever. You're not going to live forever. So those are two things that you have to plan for. Okay, in order to be financially responsible. Now, I know some people will say, hey, I want to work until I die. Fine. But the death part, yeah, it's unavoidable. Okay. According to research, everybody dies. <laughs> Not to scare you guys, but hey, guys, it's a reality that we all face. Okay. And the sad thing is that we, we know that we live on borrowed time, but we don't know how much time we have left. Okay. Uh, that's a philosophy video on its own, but we don't know how much time we have left okay life expectancy in canada is 85 but we don't know right <laughs> some people are passing away at 50 some at 60 some at 39 right but you know yeah we want to live long and all of that stuff but we don't know okay we don't know how much time we have left um and we're not going to work forever so if you're not going to work forever you need to plan for your retirement so retirement planning is the first thing okay now not first in order of priority but you know, first, <laughs> first thing I'm going to talk about are these two things. Okay, so now 
two certainties, guys. You're not going to work forever. You're not going to live forever. Now, as a life license professional, I work for I work for a brokerage, and um, I help clients, you know, to prepare and plan for an uncertain future with products from different financial institutions that are designed to address that uncertainty. Okay, so if you want to sit down with me, you can have a coffee at our fancy office in Edmonton. I work from home most of the time, uh, but you know we can have a chat on Zoom wherever you are in Canada. Um, or if you're in Edmonton, you know, yeah, we can have a coffee chat at our office there and uh, have lunch or whatever. I don't know, but let's sit down. Let's talk about your financial goals and how we can help you to get there. So retirement, guys. Now, how do people plan for retirement back where I come from? Some, you know, some parents are like, okay, well, my kids will take care of me. That happens. Uh, some plan to buy properties. Some plan to build, you know, businesses. That will generate some passive income in their retirement years. That's fine. You're business savvy. Good. You want to buy properties? Good. But you have to buy the properties. Okay. Now, what happens while you are building that stuff up? You know, you don't know how much time you have left. If something were to happen to you tomorrow or next week or next year, while you're still building that business, while you're still saving money for your retirement nest egg, or while you're still, um, you know, buying the properties or paying them off, what happens if you know you are no longer there okay now those of you who come from where i come from are all too familiar with the story of oh my parents died and i couldn't finish school or um or you know we associate widows with poverty and lack you know and it doesn't have to be like that okay life insurance is in canada and I'm sure it's the same everywhere else in the world, maybe, except I know where I come from. These things don't work anymore because of because the economy is in shambles. But life insurance in Canada, guys, uh, you know, the purpose of life insurance is to insure the life. OK, insurance is there to reimburse. It's there to replace the value of something. OK, now, as an advisor, OK, I can sit down with you and design a policy that replaces your income in case something were to happen to you so for example let's say you earn hundred thousand a year okay if something were to happen to you there are people who depend on you right there are people who depend on that paycheck that you are getting there are people who depend we are working to, to achieve two things guys number one we are working because we've got bills to pay number two we're working because we want to build something for the future Okay, maybe saving your kids' college education, build businesses, whatever, whatever, whatever. Right? So those are the two things, two reasons why we go to work every day. Okay? So what happens if something happens along the way? You want to make sure that whoever depends on your paycheck, guys, should continue living life at the same standard as they were while you were still alive. So your kids don't have to stop going to school because you're no longer there or your wife or your husband doesn't have to move into a smaller house sell off you know one or two cars or you know downgrade their lifestyle because half the income is gone or a breadwinner is gone or you know yeah i guess i hope you're getting the point here right so that's what life insurance is for guys and that's what i am licensed to do uh, among other things um and that's the good news you know with canada life insurance doesn't cost a lot of money and i bet you guys or i can tell you as an advisor that maybe like at least let me just tell stats from the people that i have sat down with like 90 percent of them guys 90 percent at least are paying more for their car insurance than they would pay for a personal life insurance policy okay so those are the two most important things that you must have in place. Number one, have life insurance, okay? And a recommended amount is like 10 times, at least 10 times your annual income. That's what it should be insured for, okay? And the cost of that, you know, whatever fits within your budget, you know, I can help you to run those scenarios. I can get you different quotes from different companies like, you know, I'm a broker. I work with a lot of different institutions. So I can certainly find something that fits within your budget and that addresses what your needs are. So I hope you find this video useful, guys. And I'm going to put a link in the description below uh, to my website. Uh, you can go check out what I do. And if you want to schedule an appointment, 
yeah sure schedule an appointment there and we can have a coffee in here in edmonton or whatever um or we can have a chat on zoom so thank you so much guys for watching and uh, i'd love to hear your feedback uh leave a comment in the comment section below like subscribe turn on notifications don't miss out i'm gonna be doing more of these financial series videos uh because hey guys with financial goals comes financial responsibility see you next time